Coming up on Here's the Truth. So many people have died on that corner. Community leaders and residents petition a North Minneapolis liquor store. I can't count how many young people that I've worked with that have lost their lives on the corner. Why they're pushing to reimagine the intersection at Broadway and Lindale. Then officials search for clarity on student resource officers in schools. Why was it put in the education bill? Because maybe that will help me understand what people, where people were coming from. Plus, buckle up for a joyride with Maya Marshall. Here's the truth starts right now. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm independent journalist Georgia Fort. We begin this week's episode with North Minneapolis residents and community leaders petitioning a liquor store. Many in the area believe Merwin Liquors has been a hotbed for violence at the Broadway Lindale intersection and they want it shut down. But the store believes they're doing the work to decrease the violence. Take a look. We have four liquor stores in a four mile area. That's ridiculous. It's killing us. A community at their boiling point. What's not being talked about is the racism involved. And they bring you these liquor stores without your permission and have meetings without you there. They got a meeting afterwards, after they damage you. There's no reason why there should be mothers in this room who are fighting to get this gone, and so many people have died on that court. North Minneapolis neighbors gathered after a petition to shut down Merwin Liquors gained hundreds of signatures. A liquor store and a gas station that is responsible for so much death for so long, how do we even get to a question yes. on whether or not they should get yes. a license? Merwin's lives at the intersection of Broadway and Lindale, one of high traffic and crime. I think community has been tired and sick and tired of doing the same thing and covering vigils and talking about the corner. Jesse Ross is a lifelong Northsider and attends Sanctuary that's located on the same block as the liquor store. I can't count how many young people that I've worked with that have lost their lives on the corner. I can't count how many funerals I've been to of people that are connected to. He says the same area he goes to worship can get very dark. I can't tell you how many people I've run into that have said, I started coming to the church here because I first came to a funeral here. And you can pretty much literally buy anything on that corner in the parking lot. And it's been like that for years. And what do you want to see done about it? I want the building to go away, the liquor store to go away. I think there needs to be a transformation. TXT Wine and Liquors and members of the Black Run nonprofit We Push for Peace operate the store and are currently applying to renew their liquor license. I'm trying to take care of business so then we can reimagine. We can't reimagine nothing without taking care of business. But community wants the store gone altogether. It is kind of a slap in the face. Um, to see that they're still trying to get rid of the store. Joe is a store manager at Merwin's. He believes ownership is taking the right steps to make the intersection more peaceful. In the last year since we've gotten, there hasn't been any killings or anything, and that was our purpose, to just make this a normal corner on the north side. According to city data, gun crimes dropped 40% last year. For those who still have a problem, you're more than welcome to come down. Um, and you can feel the, the good vibration and the wonderful energy that we provided. It's nothing but love. It's nothing but respect here. Um, it's nothing like what was remembered as to why people want to get rid of the store. The national media will paint black owned businesses, black run nonprofits against each other. And I have no beef with We Push for Peace, but I think it's important to recognize that even though calls have gone down historically, if you think about the last 10 to 20 years, however long they've been there, there's no number that can total how much destruction has gone. I understand to, a, to an extent of why there's still anger because it's been 20 some years of this going on. But I also know that, that, that the healing takes time and a year is not enough for healing. And, and with all of the pain and all of the, the lives that's been lost. But now there's new memories to be made. There's more, there's more peaceful memories to be made. That's been our goal since the beginning. It doesn't matter if there's a petition or not, we're gonna continue to do what it is that we're here to do. If this happened somewhere in Minnetonka, there's no way a business would be allowed to do whatever they were doing. And so why can't that same energy be brought yeah. into the corner on Broadway and Lindell? Jesse says community leaders are already taking steps with the city to get the store removed. And his pitch to officials is simple. Do you care about human life? 
then I'll make it a little even more specific. Do you care about black lives? Do you care about lives in North Minneapolis on this corner? If you do, then you would do something about it. We don't plan on stopping. This isn't the first time we've tried to get Mervins out of there and it's not gonna be the last. We're here for you guys. Whatever it is that you want from us, whatever it is that we can do to help make this a better a better store or, or even just a better pillar of the community, we're willing to do it. We're open to positive criticism. So what happens if the city council does not renew the license? Um, that's a good question. We'll just have to see what happens next. How do we keep our babies safe in school while not over-policing them? That's the question parents and school executives are left asking. Right now, roughly 40 law enforcement agencies have pulled student resource officers after uncertainty over the SRO law. This week, we speak to officials who feel that we should be thinking critically about our next steps. So my question is, is what are what are people to do? New uncertainty behind student resource officers in Minnesota schools is leaving some parents on edge. We have two different laws here. <laughs> we need to get this fixed. State officials are at odds over the use of force language in Governor Tim Walz's education bill. I'm trying to figure out why that language was put there. Maybe that will help me understand what people where people were coming from. Right now, it makes no sense. Law enforcement should have been brought at the table when that was being discussed. We still don't know why it was put there. Hennepin County Sheriff Dewana Witt, who spent years as an SRO herself, says the new law prevents how they can physically restrain students when needed. To say that you cannot put somebody on the ground to, to, to restrain them, I don't know how that's going to happen. It's actually going to be more dangerous trying to do that while standing. This after a video surfaced in September of a vicious fight at a high school in Mankato. And a February incident at Harding High School where a student was stabbed to death. I take so much pride in my years as a school resource officer, and I'll be darned if I let somebody taint that because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. The controversy led to dozens of law enforcement agencies pulling officers out of schools in September. We're not there to intentionally hurt these kids. So stop with the rhetoric and let's talk about what we need to do to get school resource officers back in these schools. Sheriff Witt tells us that she, along with legislators, are meeting behind the scenes to clarify the law. We need to have these conversations and we need to be able to come up with something sooner rather than later that will keep our kids safe. When you don't fully invest in restorative justice, violence goes up in the in the schools. Chantel Allen serves on the school board of St. Paul Public Schools, a district that pulled SROs back in June of 2020. Do you think that the issue surrounding SROs is especially a sensitive issue for black and brown families? I do. And to have police officers continuing that surveillance on our children um, is is very scary. Instead of SROs, Chantel is backing their roster of trained community members that have taken over security duties in schools. And has that been effective? I think so. A lot of folks actually are happy that the police officers are out of the building, mostly because it's their brothers and uncles and cousins that are now holding those positions. While the solution may be up in the air, both women agree that whoever secures schools needs to care deeply about our youth. The easiest way to get a student to class is to pull out your phone and say, I'm texting your mom. It's about the officer in that school. Some of the things that those kids came to me for were very heartbreaking, but they trusted me and they knew that I would do right by them. Sheriff Witt believes community mistrust is understandable, but she's pushing folks to challenge their biases. Parents, if, if you had those bad encounters and you don't trust your kids with um, that school resource officer, ask yourself why, make sure you're not doing the very thing that we've hated uh, for ourselves, and that's to be stereotyped. Golden Time Coffee and Cafe. One of St. Paul's beloved staples is making a change in ownership. Michael and Stephanie Wright are retiring and turning over the keys to the Rondo Community Land Trust. Golden Time has been a central hub for the Rondo community for over two decades. The organization vows to steward the shop's legacy and use the space for food businesses to get their start or expand. Sammy's Eatery is currently the first occupant. Still ahead, a gladiator who's ministering the word in the octagon. 
After the break, we'll show you how one woman is pinning down a world of self-defense. And later, buckle up for a joyride with Maya Marshall. Here at BMT, our fellas noticed the common aspiration with our young black boys becoming an athlete. That's why we've rebranded to emulate a sports communication style with teachers shining as the quarterbacks to their education. We huddle to showcase togetherness, brotherhood, and empowerment. Our kids will get to see BMT men excelling in classrooms and believing they can too. Together, we can portray black male teachers as world champions. Yeah! At Nail Partners, we prioritize people. We understand how real estate can unlock a community's aspirations. From the very beginning of a project to its completion, we create space for collaboration. By bringing people together from all walks of life, we're able to build a shared vision that benefits everyone. Because if we want stronger, healthier communities, everyone deserves a seat at the table. Nail Partners, built for community. It's time, time for America's promises to black and brown Minnesotans to be fulfilled. It's time for us to equitably share in the wealth of our nation. That's why the Center for Economic Inclusion was created, to embolden employers to invest in black and brown owned businesses and to leverage our talent to bring wealth into our community. The Center for Economic Inclusion measures what works and we hold leaders accountable. The time is now, build with us. Visit us online at centerforeconomicinclusion.org. Three years ago, COVID-19 forced our entire world to stop. Even as we adjust to a new society, the fight against the virus continues. That's why the Minnesota Department of Health is urging you to get the updated COVID-19 vaccine that's FDA approved. It's specifically designed to combat the latest variants and available for everyone aged six months and older. Worried about the cost? Free and low-cost vaccines are available. Just check in with your clinic before scheduling. Don't have insurance? We got you. Just contact your nearest community health center. Corona is still around, so keep yourself and your people safe. Together, we can win this Fight. Here's the truth is sponsored by Media Bridge, a media, data, and creative agency who believes the best strategy is to care. For more information, MediaBridgeAdvertising.com. People are going to know they fought war machine because I'm going to put on a war, I'm going to fight like a machine, and machines don't give up, they keep going. Some people fight for survival, others do it to send a message. But Brittany War Machine Neiman enters the octagon to do both. She says faith, family, fitness, and representation for black women in her sport is what propels her and others through life's toughest battles. A force to be reckoned with in gyms and arenas. I go in and I roll and there's something about that physicalness that's like, ah. Oh. All that is released. Brittany's presence breaks the mold of what a typical gladiator looks like. I'm going to put number one is jujitsu. That's my number one. I've done a little bit of Muay Thai. Again, my kicks usually are more Taekwondo. I don't really do a lot of Taekwondo style um, uh, striking, but then I have boxing as well. So jujitsu, Muay Thai, Taekwondo, and boxing. A multidisciplinary fighter who packs a strong punch in a small frame. She's very quick and she can transition really fast, and she's also deceptively strong. Like, like again, like she, she looks really little, but she has strength like none other. And I think just both of those combined is scary as, as her opponent. So War Machine is actually my MMA fight name slash jujitsu fight name. People are going to know they fought War Machine because I'm going to put on a war, I'm going to fight like a machine, and machines don't give up, so keep going. When I first met Brittany, it was my first time coming to this gym in Woodbury. I hadn't trained in a couple of years, and in my head, I was thinking, you know, she, she looks pretty small. I can probably at least hold my own, and she humbled me very quickly. 
She's pinned down a world where self-defense and her faith can join forces in the octagon. Like in faith, there's something different about you. Oh, let me tell you about this man named Jesus that transformed me. It's the same thing with jujitsu and with self-defense. It's like, what makes you so confident? It's like, or you're in shape, they can physically see like, oh, you lift or do something. And it's like, let me show you that you can have this confidence too. Delivering takedowns and the word of God. We, we've had conversations, of course, with jujitsu, but also with um, spirituality as well. I always say faith, fitness, and family for me are, those three keep me going. And faith is my number one thing. So um, being able to share the word of, of God and really being able to share who Christ is in my life that's what drives me. War Machine teaches self-defense classes tailored for women at risk of domestic violence. I feel like it's more receptive versus like if a man goes and teaches a woman, so, not always, but sometimes they can feel like, well, of course you can do it. You know, like look at you with all your muscles. I'm small, I'm like, oh, barely 5'3", right, 120. But if I can do it, they're like, wow, you toss that 6'2 dude like around, that means I can do it. So there's something about a woman being able to show another woman that is so much more encouraging and relatable than sometimes when a man does it. I'm using my hands to not push him off, I'm using him to push me away. And this is where that shrimping position is. <laughs> it was just so transformational for the students, physically, but mentally as well. They started to believe in themselves. Uh, they have this inner self-confidence that Brittany brought out of them. One of my favorite techniques I get a lot because people don't usually anticipate it is a triangle from side control or judo side. I'll throw my leg around and get what's called a triangle here. And I squeeze their neck tightly. And it usually opens up other stuff. You can get like an arm bar or different things, a Americana or a Kimura, but it's usually the triangle with the legs. And that's one of my favorite moves. The Christ part in me was like, just, just tell him you don't want to fight anymore. But the fighter in me was like, oh, your nose hurts. Bow. And I'll be honest with you, <laughs> I can't say that I can find it biblically okay to do what I do. Um, but I will say that I use my character as a fighter to represent Christ. Take my shoe and. But you don't, because you know you would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my dad has been such a great example. And him winning, he was always usually the smallest. My dad's like 5'9", but he would usually be the smallest when he was competing. And he would go out and fight these giants and did not care. He just had that tenacity and that grind. And from that, that was instilled in me. Can you say hi? Hi. hi. Can you tell him your name? Emilia. Hi, Emilia. Emilia. Hi, baby. Hi. So through that, that's, that's, it's built me for who I am, and I try to also instill that into my kids. I think because they've been around it all my life, it doesn't, I don't have to explain to them, like, Mommy, why did you go in there and hit that girl? They just they just know, like, it's a sport, and that's what I'm doing, so they, they support me. What I want my legacy to be is one that my life brought people to Christ, first and foremost. And I want them to know that I was a fighter. Brittany tells us she's in the process of starting a gym right here in the Twin Cities. For more info on that and her athletic brand, Fighting Spirit, visit her website, fightingspiritmaf.com. Still ahead, buckle up for a joy ride with Maya Marshall as she tells us about the inspiration behind her latest project. It won't be so wavy when you drown it, baby, but I can introduce you to the one who saved me. This commercial break is powered by U.S. Bank's Access Commitment Initiative. U.S. Bank is building black wealth by uplifting and supporting black-owned businesses like these. Papa Legba's Lounge is home to musical legends of the past. Papa Legba offers a place for mature audiences to relax and unwind with signature cocktails inspired by legendary musicians. Papa Legba brings extraordinary soul music to the Twin Cities and provides local talent a platform to showcase their music. Check out our website for weekly performances at PapaLegbaLounge.com. TNT Academy is the ultimate performance recovery program focused on football skills training, strength and conditioning, and overall mentorship for young men. With our exclusive training program, you'll learn all the secrets of our top athletes to ensure that you're always one step ahead of the competition. We take an innovative approach to focus on injury prevention. 
We work with all levels, youth all the way up to the pros. For more information, visit TNTAcademySP.com. At Reviving Roots, we celebrate black joy because the mental health journey can feel overwhelming, difficult, and even shameful at times. Reviving Roots is a Black-centered and Black-affirming holistic mental health and wellness space in the heart of Minneapolis. While we offer mental health therapy, we believe in a holistic approach to wellness, addressing the whole person by providing a variety of tools and resources. We're here to support our community in living their truth. Learn more at www.reviving-roots.com. For certain, one thing is for sure Is God love the trap, you should already know Even though we thugging and breaking the rules His grace is sufficient enough so A bright blend of trap music, spiritual bars, and fashion Maya Marshall showcases it all through her art In this week's Joyride, she tells us about the inspiration behind her latest project Do you identify as a gospel artist? So this latest project it is in like the gospel, like Christian genre. But no, I just feel like I'm an artist. Like I feel like I don't really fit into a box. Now a lot of your family, I heard, are musicians? Yes, they are. So like uh, my grandmother, she was, uh, she played the piano and she was a singer. Um, all of, she had eight children, uh, three sets of twins. All of them sing and or play an three instrument. Three sets of twins? Three sets of twins. Wow. So like, your whole family is just like a band. <laughs> Basically, they had a group. They were called the Minnesota Gospel Twins. I love back it. Back in the day, yeah. House. I love yeah, it. Yeah, they had a whole thing going on. So we are rolling up to Harvest Prep Academy. HBA. Hey. This is the first school I ever attended. And this is the first place I was ever employed after I got my graduate degree. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you went here mm -hmm. and then you worked here. I went here and then I worked here. When the student becomes a teacher. Yes. <laughs> All of my teachers here, I loved. And OK, the crazy thing is I didn't have a white teacher till I was in the sixth grade. Wow. This when you are taking instruction from someone who looks like you, mm -hmm. it makes you just feel a little bit more at ease. Talking I'm talking their language. Yeah. They feel comfortable with me. They know that I would do anything to protect them and make sure that they're good. What's the question you always hope an interviewer would ask and they never ask? What was like my favorite, um, my favorite feature, maybe? Oh, I have a good question. What was yes. like your favorite feature? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to be on the Trap Evangelist project, uh, the last song, Amazing, with Kier Sheard. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite. I love Kier. How did that come to fruition? How did it, oh, she came here one time for uh -huh. a gig she had and she didn't have anyone traveling with her. And Senator Champion asked me like, hey, could you, yep. you know, be Kiera's point person? I'm like, what, I love her. Yeah, I'm doing it. Six months later, she still had my number and hit me up. Like, I've been thinking about you. I need some help. You think you could help me? I was like, what? Yeah. She's a superstar, but she still makes sure that she's in her church serving, doing, running stuff, doing stuff. And then just uh, how creative she is, like so many different ideas and she actually sees them through. I was like, okay, yeah. This is, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I needed to see. So it was great. Let's get back to the program. Can't take no credit for my candor. That was God's plan. Cause why they acting like I ain't the one that did it first. I gave these bras the game for free. Didn't even get reimbursed. But I ain't tripping. Gonna keep hitting them where I know it hurts. My granny taught me to be grateful because it could be worse. I could be you. Now that's a tragedy. So tell me about the significance of this location. It's such a beautiful home. So this is my grandmother's house. Aww. So yeah, the project I just put out um, earlier this month, Thelma taught me this is Thelma's home. It was her home for about, what, like 30, 40 years. Wow. She ran an emergency foster care shelter. Wow. So at any time there was like 16 to 20 kids in her house and she had an arcade in the basement. I got a lot from my grandmother, just um, things that she didn't even know that she was teaching. Um, how to just hold your own as a woman, as a black woman. You know, she was born in the 1930s. So just being like resilient, um, creating uh, opportunities uh, and just being, you know, just being a boss. She was a musician. So she uh, she loved music. She was a preacher too. So she oh, was wow. a, yeah she was a really good speaker and a good storyteller. Wow. Yeah. Wow. She sounds like such a dynamic woman. Definitely. I wish I could have met her. I know. I wish you could have too. Yeah. yeah. I know what they want. 
drugs in the club Wanna go hard, get turned up Thinking that it's sweaty you know, I always wanted to work with Javante. How did the collaboration come to be between you two? I used to sing with Javante. You know, he had a choir and everything. Mm -hmm. Sing that. Um, I've known Javante since I was like 16. And the funny thing is Javante is now my pastor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I go to so the way. So you go to the way. Yes, okay. I go to the way. The thing I love is also in a sense, you're not preaching to the choir. Drugs in the club to me is a song that's meeting people where they're at. And I'd be a mess. Ain't talking about Usher, but I must confess, I'm trying to finesse. Try to have it my way, but he know what's best. Drug after drug, pill after pill, drink after drink. Also, you can feel what you think you missing. Trying to get a grip when it be whole time. It's your soul that's... What do you want your, your legacy to be? My legacy is that I didn't fit into a box, right? And that anything I wanted to do, I did it. Like whether it was, you know, being an artist, being a social worker, uh, being a speaker, a preacher, a teacher, um, you know, being an author, whatever that was, whatever I wanted to do, I was able to do it. And I feel like I want, you know, young women or just black children in general to like take that and just run with it. Like you can do anything you want to do, yeah. literally. Yeah. yeah. Just when I thought he had destroyed my tempo I heard a voice say something so simple Like, hey pretty, hey, hey pretty You ever wonder why they call you pretty? It's because you were made in his image You've got the glow and nobody can dim it Like, hey pretty, hey, hey pretty You ever wonder why Thanks so much for watching Here's the Truth. To support our weekly TV show, head over to georgiafort.com and become a monthly subscriber. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next Saturday at 11. Coming up next week on Here's the Truth, Minneapolis business owners in opposition of a proposed blue line route are speaking out. So if they did put it on Broadway, all of these buildings would have to be torn down. So, and these are all black owned. Plus, works of art reveal the rich indigenous history of the land we stand on. And buckle up for a joy ride with Javante Patton. Don't miss Here's the Truth, Saturday mornings at 11 on the CW Twin Cities. I'm here to talk about something super important, COVID-19. Bum, bum, bum. Now I know we'd all like to leave COVID in the past, but it's still here. And if it's still here and you wanna keep your kids safe, healthy, and at school instead of home with you, you gots to get us vaccinated. So here's some facts about facts to make it easier for you. COVID-19 vaccines are recommended for all of us starting at six months old. Vaccines are super safe and come with few side effects. And the best part, folks, these vaccines are free 99 and you don't need insurance. Visit mn.gov slash vax for kids to find out how, when, and where to get your kiddos vaxxed. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Thank you. That's all for this episode of Fast Attack. Y'all be safe out there. Your home for hip hop and R&B. We the best. Power 1047, where old school meets new school.